There are a lot of different types of 3D layers available to us in Photoshop CS4. We can convert 2D layers to 3D. We can bring in 3D models and animate them. And we can also grab some 3D shapes that are already existing in Photoshop CS4, as well as meshes and different things. And we're only going to touch on some of these because we do want to concentrate on the basic editing aspects of it and how that relates to animation and video. But I will cover all of these items briefly including cameras and lights, shapes, and how to edit those, and how they can all interact and how we can kind of fake it as well here in Photoshop CS4. So the first thing we can do is let's look at just regular 2D layers that we have. I've got this video layer that we've used in previous movies, and also a text layer. Well, right now those are just 2D, and if I hit my preview here, I've just got text on top of a video layer. So I can go up here and actually change uh, this video layer here to a 3D layer. I just select it here in the layer palette and then come up to 3D and select new 3D postcard from layer. Now what that will do is take everything that's visible in this window on that layer and convert it to a 3D layer. So what that means is now I can come down here to the 3D rotate tool it's a universal rotate tool that allows me to just click out here, grab it, and you can see how I can just kind of move it and rotate it around like so. I can also do other things using these arrows here. And these are our XYZ space. And the Y uh, position is this green one, the up and down. And that allows us to just, if we highlight that yellow cone on the top of the uh, arrow there. That allows us to move it up and down in space. You notice that as we roll over different uh, items on this tool, you'll see how things will move. So we can see that we're going to rotate in this direction. And then if I click this here and squish and drag, that's actually scaling. So there's a lot of things we can do all in this one tool setting. Now notice we've got a lot of different tools up here. We've got the rotate tools, just kind of the all-in-one tool that we see here. We've got this here, it's called the roll tool, and that does similar, but as you do it, it's it basically it's just rolling it or rotating it in one direction or another. Again, as long as this tool is visible here, we can still access any of these features and rotate in any direction that we want, uh, as long as we're uh, highlighting something on these arrows. Here's the move tool. We can grab that and that just allows us to move things in one direction if we just grab it. And this is a useful one. This is kind of our zoom tool. This allows us to zoom things in and out. And we'll be getting into uh, another movie on creating some kind of zooms for video, uh, video layers in 3D where we can kind of access some of those tools to uh, mimic what we would like to be able to do in two-dimensional worlds, such as changing scale, zoom, uh, something that's outside of position. So we can do some rotates and, and zooms and create some nice effects, just given a simulated 2D effect. And uh, then we've got the scale tool here, which we can grab that, and that scales it up and down, so it doesn't just zoom, it actually changes the scale of that 3D layer. I'm going back to the universal tool again here. And uh, I actually got this little doghouse here. That's the uh, home button. If we click that, that's going to reset that layer to its home position. Let's do that first. And now that we can uh, move things and rotate things here in space, uh, we can see that we actually do have 3D. Now I can do the same thing with this text layer here. I can uh, grab that and uh, come up here and say new 3D postcard from layer. It's going to rasterize the text, so I won't be able to edit the text anymore, but I will have the capability of playing with it in 3D space. Well, notice the layers don't interact with each other. I can't really move this layer and have it punch through the one behind it. It doesn't work quite like 3D layers do in After Effects, where everything's based on planes and each layer will interact with each other. You can push one through another. You can have them intersect. You can actually build cubes 
there's a lot of things you can do. And if you check out the Learning After Effects CS4 title on photoshopcafe.com, you'll see that we go into those principles of 3D space and After Effects quite extensively. So that's just taking some two-dimensional layers. Well, what if we want a 3D layer? Let's uh, go ahead and close those up. Let's take a look at 3D shapes that are built in here. We'll start with a new blank layer. And we'll come up here to 3D and select New Shape from Layer. We've got a few uh, different choices here that are built into Photoshop CS4. I'm going to select this one here, Donut. Here we go. You'll see we've got this torus shape here, and it has lights from all different directions. We'll, we'll get into lights and textures in another movie, but for now, let's take a look at the shape and what is this shape all about. Well, we don't have much access to this information yet until we open up the actual 3D window. So let's go do that. We'll go up here to Window and then select 3D. And now we've got a lot of information about this 3D layer. So now we're just looking at the same tools here that we have up along the top, basically. It's just for this one element in this shape layer. Uh, then we've got the material here. If we click on that, We'll see we've got all of these different options. I'm going to be getting into that in another movie as well. And then we've got some lights here, which will be yet another movie on how to control our lights. And then we'll bring it all together into uh, a final project, which I'll show you how to uh, so do a lot of things with this particular shape. Let's just look at the basic scene here. I've got this uh, donut shape out here. Now, by default, it comes up as a just a solid uh, looking type of item. But what if we click this cross section button here? I click that, we'll see that it cuts it in half. And we'll notice that, oh, there's, there's half of this donut here, but there's also something gray in there. Well, I've got this black background on. So let me hide that black background for a minute so we can really see what's going on. So we can see there's this plane. In here, the plane shows us where it's slicing that item in half. So if I play with the offset here, I can slide that a long time. We can see that that plane is actually slicing this model at that point. We can turn that plane off, or we can adjust its uh, visibility there if we wanted to. We can flip this intersection, so we're just looking at the other half instead of that half. And then the offset here allows us to uh, select how much of this is visible. Well, we'll also notice that it isn't real accurate as far as shading and lighting and all of that. Uh, 3D models in Photoshop don't really uh, adhere to the same rules as 3D models in regular 3D programs. That's something we'll cover as well when we get into all the different textures and uh, modeling techniques here. So uh, we can see that it's hollow look inside it looks like a piece of macaroni now and uh, we can also play with the axis that we are actually slicing this so right now it's in the x-axis if I click Y we'll see that it flips it around and if we click Z then it cuts it in half uh, horizontally so now we've got this like a uh, chip bowl here uh, you can put some tortilla chips and some salsa in the middle there so now we can play with our offset, how much it's going to cut into it, and play with it that way. And we'll see we've got the inside and the out. And we've got different ways that we can render this. And this is something that I'll get into in more detail in other movies as well. But for now, we'll just look and see. We've got our uh, face uh, style is solid. And if I select Ray Traced, it's going to take a lot more time, but it will uh, force it to adhere to more of the rules of reflectivity, uh, refractions and shadows, and lights will affect it better. Um, and we'll get into that as well with, with some other objects. But uh, ray tracing does slow down the machine quite a bit. We'll leave it on solid for now while we're exploring this. If you want to show the polygons, click this here, the edge style. And this will show the actual polygons here. I usually click this remove back faces off because I want to see all of the polygons. If that's the case, I want to see the actual structure inside and out. So as I move this around, and I can also click here and hide the 
solid setting. So I just have the uh, edges. And that's kind of like a CAD drawing. And that's pretty handy, especially if you import a 3D model and you want to see all of your polygons and you want it to uh, display that way, either for illustration or animation purposes. This is kind of a nice effect as well if you uh, want that real 3D model look to it. So the last type of 3D layer that we'll work with is when we import an actual 3D model. I'll come up here to 3D and then New Layer from 3D File and I'll select an object. Typically I've found that either object files or 3ds Max uh, files work the best, they retain the most information, and they seem to be the most compatible. You can experiment with other types and see how they work for you. This is just what I've found to be the best. I'm going to grab this 3ds model here of this cart, select that. It takes a couple seconds for it to open, and there we go. I've got this 3D shopping cart in here and then we can play with that. Now we'll get into lighting and shading and textures and everything later on. Uh, models can be very complicated by the way that your materials are applied. Not everything comes in the way you would think. You don't have the flexibility of say like moving these wheels around, uh, anything like that for animation. Those you're going to have to still do in your 3D app and animate them and then bring in a file with alpha channel and uh, work with it that way or do your compositing in your 3D program. So don't expect Photoshop to just be able to open up a 3D file and even though we can spin it around we can change textures, we can change the light, uh, shadows don't work exactly the same way that we would think but there's ways that we can fake it and that's really what it's all about here in this title is how can we make these tools uh, behave the way we would like them to or at least be able to fake it. And that's really what we're going to be all about. So let's get looking at all of these different types of 3D layers and how we'll work with them in the movies to follow.